All right, so the first thing you need to know uh, for the next exit ticket is that Earth rotates on its axis. So imagine sitting in an office chair and spinning around and around and around. That is rotating, okay? That's what makes our night and day. Earth revolves around the sun. So imagine you're in that office chair and you're chasing your brother around the classroom, okay? That would be revolving. You're going around something, okay? Now, if you're on one of those uh, amusement park rides where not only is your cart going in a circle, but you're also spinning around, then you're like the Earth, okay? Um, and why are, are we talking about this? Because when you look up in the sky, you see certain constellations in the sky. You see the stars, you see them in certain patterns that humans have identified as constellations. Those constellations change throughout the year, okay, in a predictable way. Um, the reason they change or appear to change is because of the revolution of the Earth around the sun, okay? So if you are Right? Here's the Earth. You're going around the sun. Okay? You're going to see different stars here than when you're over here. Right? So, you see different constellations throughout the year because of the way the Earth revolves around the sun. Alright? So, all three of these are convergent boundaries. Uh, if you have two continental plates crashing into each other, you're going to get mountains like the Himalayas. If you have a continental plate and an oceanic plate, they're going to crash into each other and the denser oceanic crust is going to subduct under the less dense continental crust. And that's going to give you a subduction zone, a trench, and volcanoes because as the magma here builds up from the melting oceanic crust, it's gonna start bubbling up and you're gonna get volcanoes. If you have two oceanic crusts, crust, two oceanic crust converging, um, you're still gonna get the subduction, the trench, and the volcanoes. The trench is gonna be right here, okay? All right. How does deforestation affect uh, runoff and erosion? Well, when we have trees and stuff, there's less runoff because the trees and the shrubs and the grass and stuff slow down the runoff and it has more time to infiltrate into the soil and the rock layers. When we have trees and stuff, we're going to have more biodiversity because we have trees, we have shrubs, we have squirrels, we have birds, we have deer and all sorts of stuff. Okay? So, and because there's less runoff, there's less erosion. Right? So, but when we cut down a forest, now there's nothing to slow down the runoff. So instead of infiltrating, it just runs off. Okay? That means there's more erosion. We cut down trees, so there's less trees, there's less squirrels, there's less birds, so there's less biodiversity. And because now there are fewer trees in the world, less CO2 is taken out of the atmosphere, okay? So um, deforestation increases runoff, increases erosion, decreases biodiversity, and increases the CO2 in the atmosphere. All right, um, so cool. So we, if we have warm water down here at the equator, right? The equator is nice and warm, right? It's, it's all year long, it's nice and warm. So that warm water, if it starts moving towards the equator, I'm not sorry, it moves from the equator towards the pole, north or south, it's gonna start cooling because it's getting away from the hottest part of the earth. And as it cools, 
it's going to become more dense because these water molecules are going to get closer and closer together. And as they get closer together, they become more dense and they're going to start to sink. Okay? And so if warm water moves towards the pole, it gets cooler, denser, and it sinks. All right. Um, if we have a farm near a river, right? There could be a lot of pollution if we have an irresponsible farmer. Uh, if we have a responsible farmer, then there would be very little pollution. There's probably still going to be some, just, you know, they spray pesticide on their crops and the wind blows some of it away. So there's going to be some pollution, but may, hopefully very little. But if we cut down trees and build more farms, okay, then as we build more farms, even if they're all very responsible, there's still going to be more pollution in the river. Okay? So we have to think about, you know, we need a new farm to feed everybody, but where is the best place for the farm? Okay? Where is the farm going to have the least environmental impact? Where is... Um, you know, it's, we just have to think about both sides of the issue. All right. Wind is caused by differences in air pressure. Okay. The sun heats up the atmosphere differently in different places. So um, that's what causes wind. There's differences in air pressure from the uneven heating of the atmosphere by the sun. And wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure. Okay, so if you have a hot area like the equator, that hot air starts rising and that creates low pressure. And someplace where it's cooler, the air is sinking, that creates high pressure and it's gonna move towards the equator. So that's how we get global winds. Um, a, a more, a small scale example might be if you have a large black parking lot. Right? The air above that parking lot is going to heat up very quickly. And so that air is going to start rising. And as it rises, that creates low pressure. Okay, So then uh, cooler air from the field next to the parking lot is going to blow towards the parking lot to replace that rising air. So that's, that's how we get wind, um, great and small. But the greater the difference in air pressure, the faster the wind blows. So if you have like my example with the parking lot, let's say the parking lot's over here, you got that rising air and you've got just got a field over here. Okay, here's my field. So there's gonna be some a breeze, some wind. It's not gonna be super fast or super strong. On the other hand, if we have a storm front coming in, storms are very low pressure. So we're going to have stronger wind and faster moving wind. Um, that's how tornadoes get, the center of a tornado is low pressure. So the wind is blowing towards and spiraling towards that center. That's why they spin. Um, you have hurricanes. Again, their hurricanes are low pressure, so the air is blowing and spiraling towards the center. Um, global sea level is affected by global temperature because not only is global temperature going to cause ice to melt, raising sea level, but as the sea level, as the ocean water itself warms up, it's going to expand. We call that thermal expansion. And as it expands, sea level is going to rise. So there are two reasons that global temperatures are going to cause sea level to rise. Um, remember, biotic are living things. Abiotic are non-living things. Um, and remember that increasing the organic matter in soil, um, gardeners call that mulch or compost, that's gonna help in 
improve the nutrition in the soil. Uh, if people in agriculture wanted to reduce the amount of pollution they produce, um, they can reduce pesticide use, increase ro crop rotation. Crop rotation is just saying, hey, I've got this farm and one year I'm going to plant corn. Now when I harvest the corn, I'm going to plant peanuts. And when I, I'm done with the peanuts, I'm going to harvest them and then I'm going to plant soybeans. And then when I, I, I'm done with the soybeans, I'm going to plant corn again. So you're rotating what crops. You're not planting the same crop over and over again. Um, and the re you do that for two reasons. One, if you plant the same crop over and over again, you're just taking the same nutrients out of the soil, selling them at market, and then you have to fertilize with chemical fertilizers. But if you rotate and you put in things like peanuts, the peanuts actually put nitrogen back in the soil. Okay, so rotating crops is a good thing. Um, reduce your fertilizer uh, usage because again, fertilizer, when it, it, it gets washed or blown out of the farm, it becomes a pollutant. Um, increase native species. Use native species for landscaping and stuff um, instead of non-native species. Uh, you want to try to avoid those. All right, so that's it. This will be the second exit ticket. We'll probably do it Wednesday. All right. Have a good day.